coronaviruses are a large family of enveloped RNA viruses that are common in people and many species of animals, including cattle, camels, cats, and bats. There are hundreds of coronaviruses, but only a few are known to affect people. Four human coronaviruses cause only mild to moderate cold or flu-like symptoms. Three others originate from animal infections and can be transmitted to humans. These viruses are SARS-CoV, MERS, and now SARS-CoV-2, and they cause much more serious respiratory infections. SARS stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. The first human case appeared in China in the fall of 2002 and was thought to have originated in bats, which was then transmitted to other animals before infecting humans. The 2003 epidemic resulted in more than 8,000 infections in 26 countries, causing 813 deaths. MERS stands for Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and emerged in Saudi Arabia and Jordan in 2012. It was hypothesized that humans contracted this virus from camels. More than 2,400 cases were reported, with 858 deaths. SARS-CoV-2 is the virus causing the COVID-19 pandemic that has resulted, as of August 31, 2020, in more than 25 million infections and more than 844,000 deaths globally. From the SARS-CoV and MERS outbreaks, we learned coronaviruses can be extremely contagious with high fatality rates. We also learned the importance of rapid virus detection by tests such as PCR to identify infected patients and develop strategies to reduce human-to-human -human transmission, including transmission to healthcare workers. From the first SARS-CoV and MERS epidemics, we learned that the viruses can have direct viral cytopathic effects. It can infect the lung airway epithelial cells, immune cells, and cells of other tissue types. We also learned that they affect the immune response, causing excessive cytokine release and depletion of certain immune cells, resulting in severe lung injury for some patients. The main reasons patients infected with SARS-CoV and MERS were transferred to the ICU were respiratory failure and complications due to multi-organ failure, superinfections, and thrombosis. We are seeing similar reasons in SARS-CoV-2. So, what have we learned from SARS-CoV-2 so far? As shown in the table, we found that the transmissibility of SARS-CoV-2, also referred to as r naught, is similar to that of SARS-CoV and greater than that of MERS. SARS-CoV-2 infection has an incubation time of 4 to 14 days, compared to 2 to 7 days for SARS-CoV. This longer incubation time may lead to more cases of asymptomatic infection, as described for the COVID-19 pandemic. Since these asymptomatic individuals are thought to transmit the active virus, it has made the virus difficult to control. While most SARS-CoV cases required hospitalization and were associated with a case fatality rate, or CFR, of 10%, approximately 20% of SARS-CoV-2 infected patients require hospitalization, and the CFR is 1.4 to 3.4%. In addition to pulmonary disease, we are also learning that SARS-CoV-2 can result in extrapulmonary and systemic manifestations. Some of the patients who've recovered from COVID-19 have persistent pulmonary as well as extrapulmonary symptoms. The experience with previous coronavirus epidemics has provided some important lessons for our current response to the COVID-19 pandemic. While the other coronavirus outbreaks were serious and caused many fatalities, they didn't rise to the level of pandemics. Possibly because the short incubation times and higher case mortality rate limited the opportunities to spread the disease on a greater scale, such as in COVID-19. This highlights the importance of preventive and disease control measures, such as viral testing, wearing masks, social distancing, lockdowns, treatments, and vaccines, which are important for controlling the virus.